Morning. So we've all done it at some point in time. We've worked all season. We've got our stands in the perfect places. Everything's just right. And then all of a sudden you figure out 30 yards over this way, there's all kinds of deer walking through the woods. So you gotta go out and create a quick hot spot. That's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna show you that exact situation where we have this real pretty shooting lane lined up. And then off to the right at about 35 yards, there's a real thick area and we found a huge scrape in there and we've got bucks moving through there. So we had to act fast and we're gonna put in a hot spot. We're gonna use moonshine gold. I'll talk to you about our management practices real here real quick. I'll show you some of the fields. I'll show you what we're doing, just general stuff. So. And I'll take you hunting with you. I'll show you the bucks that we saw just in one day. Here we go. I go straight from the bank, gassing up the tank, cranking up the radio, playing old Hank. It ain't that long till I'm back at the pond. I'm pulling up the truck, down at the dock. It's time to do some cruising, baby, get a little stuck. It's a Saturday joy ride. Okay, so I just spent half an hour in there with the chainsaw. The, this morning, the problem was, is I could just identify his body. And by the time I identified his body, he moved into this thick stuff. I didn't have a shot, so I'm in there clearing it out. People are gonna say, Doc, he'll never come back. Dude, trust me, I've been doing this a long time. Tomorrow morning, he's gonna be back. They don't care. This is a working farm property. It just doesn't bother them. So, I'm gonna take some moonshine gold. Um, I don't have any molasses, so I'm gonna use some mud hole molasses. And uh, again, if you're in one of these remote spots, you can put this into your backpack. And that's why this was designed. It's not so much that they're gonna sit there and eat it, eat it for an hour. It's the scent, it makes them stop. <laughs> so if you have a scrape, put this right along that scrape, right next, put a big long line and they'll come in, especially for some reason, like I was saying, when you go to the gym and you work out about an hour after that, dude, you're like, I want McDonald's, I want Chick-fil-A, I want a Big Mac, you're starving. It's the same thing with these bucks. A lot of these bucks are out chasing does all night long. And then that morning hour, and, and also right early afternoon, if they come out, man, they're looking for some easy carbohydrates. That's why they're coming into corn, they're coming into anything sweet. So let's go do that. Man. 29 degrees last week, it's gonna get up to 80 today. So there's the redneck skyscraper up there. And I was looking through here and I could just barely see a little spot here. So I've opened up this, I've opened up this, and I've opened up this. This is the beautiful part. See this? This was naturally here, this bending branch. <laughs> and then look, I got a big scrape here. I got a big scrape here. There's another scrape up there. There's another scrape down here, and there's a massive scrape down over on that main lane. So just put it out. Wherever you want them to stop, wherever you want them to stop, that's where you're going to put it. And it's real fine. So. And I'm basically, I'm just putting a line right in line with my shooting stuff and that'll carry a huge scent zone. But when he comes through here, if he comes through here tomorrow morning, 
he probably hit this scrape and then he'll come over here and he'll stop right there and he'll actually smell that ground and lick it just for a second and that's all i need okay. and to top it all off i actually i get this at walmart maybe i'll find it on amazon for you guys i'll put a link this is that gel spray it shoots a long stream and what i do is i go through here and i hit trees i hit trees and i'll hit this limb real quick i'll hit the actual rub and then i'll hit trees all around here and man he'll just come in again you got sex you got food what else would you want <laughs> Oh man, that's, so... that's a good smell though. I gotta do this upwind. I don't want to sink like this. That was crazy. <laughs> so yesterday, it's still 7, 7.30 this morning. Yesterday went in that honey hole, made that honey hole. Two bucks have been in that honey hole, eating that moonshine and gold. Another buck was behind me. A nice little six point. That eight point I've seen on camera a lot. We call him Bucky. He's a nice buck. Anybody would take that buck. But we're just waiting for that. I'm waiting for that that special buck out here. We have seen at least 40 different bucks out here over the past two weeks. And they're all working my girls. The rut is on. So it's just been crazy. So I'm actually out of the stand a little bit early today because we've got our first real rain event in like three months coming up. Horrible drought. But... This is what I call the Redneck Skyscraper. We've got three stands out here. This is the Redneck Skyscraper. This is the main lane down here that we have. And over here in this nasty thick stuff is where we discovered that travel corridor back there. And that's where we cleared it out, put moonshine gold, and man, worked perfect. I do want to show you, by the way, some people ask about our sweatshirts. It has the Rack Ranch logo there and it has a big one on the back. Um, people ask where they can get them. You can get them the same place I get them. I put them up on Teespring. And on Teespring, you have the option to set a profit margin. We set it at zero. And I actually um, order just like you do because there's no profit. So I go to that website and order them. Order a size larger if you get them because they're not, they're medium quality. And they do shrink a little bit. But they're, the nice thing about this is when you get out of the stand, you got on blaze orange. We always have a vest and we hang the vest outside of our stand when we get in. But you know, sometimes you forget your vest or something or you take it off cause you're hot. Now you got blaze orange on all the time. Even though I'm hunting my own property, it's 40 acres, there's no one around. I'm still wearing damn orange. So let me show you real quick. Um, <laughs> this was a gorgeous lush food plot up here one of the reasons why I'm out of the stand early today is because I want to get some I want to finish I've put down all kinds of seed I've, we've put down 
uh, rye, cereal rye, we've got forage oats, we've got clover and all around. This is the one spot that I haven't put fresh seed on. And in about four hours, it's gonna start raining. And it's gonna rain for two days. Oh, I'm so happy, I'm so tired of watering. So I guess I'm smarter than I look because last night I packed up this clover seed back here in my little hand spreader. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover this area real heavy in white clover seed. All right, so I'm gonna take you up to the field. Fat dog wanted to go, but Linda's over there on the porch and I told her to come with me, but man, they pout. If I don't take them for a ride, they just pout. stay there she's strapped in she's too fat to move anyways so let me explain how we manage this property real quick these fields would be completely dead if I didn't pump 450 feet on a high pressure pump up to my fields watering this same thing then I also tee off of that and I run there's a big green circle over on that field and the rest of the field is basically dead and that's because I'm irrigating it we have a large pretty good sized corn field up there that we just plowed under because it, the drought killed it all. And I've planted a whole bunch of stuff up there, all kinds of different mixes between clovers and uh, forage oats and rye and actually some um, Austrian winter peas. And this is, this is it. This is the rain event that's gonna get everything going. But I want you to look at this. So I've got my white clover. I've got turnip in here. There's a uh, cereal rye, and then there's in here that has just started. These are, these are Austrian winter peas. So they're not really covered up that well, but it's wet enough now. And with two days of rain, all this stuff will start to sprout additionally in here. And this stuff's gonna explode. Now we put a really cool video to watch is watch the liming video. We put 14,000 pounds of lime on this, that, and the upper field, 14,000 pounds of lime. Um, right before that, we ran a subsoiler. We don't, we never till our fields, but we ran a subsoiler, which is like a little hook that goes about 20 inches down and just lifts our hard clay layer. It doesn't disturb anything in there. The biology remains, it's beautiful. But uh, anyways, that's, uh, Everything here is basically done for the wildlife. I'd say 90% of the property is focused on the deer, the turkey, and the wildlife. We, I just had the pond stock yesterday. I got a video on that coming up. But uh, we don't harvest does, and let me explain why. Man, I've never been happier to stand in the rain and shoot a video. <laughs> we have been so dry, and it's gonna rain for two days. It's starting right now, thank goodness. But let me explain the philosophy here. I've been doing this for decades and decades. And there's kind of this, I don't want to say it's a myth, but it's a misconception that all property owners need to harvest does. And that's just not the case. Our property is managed in such a way it has a massive carrying capacity. I want as many does as possible on my land. And why is that? It's because during the rut, the number one attractant for bucks is not food. It's not habitat. It's does. I have tens of, tens of thousands of acres all around me. Not much is planted for the deer or not much is crops. A lot of it is um, actually for, for cattle, for cows. And the, the, my does are residential. So they'll stay here all year round. Matter of fact, we talk to the babies. We see them all around here. We raise them, we feed them. They're, they'll be standing 20 feet away from us and they're very tolerant. But I have bucks from all around here hundreds of bucks come on my property during the rut it's amazing it's absolutely amazing i have like nine cameras all around my property and it's like every night i have 360 photos it's just i get tired of looking at them but the number one thing that they're attracted to is they're attracted to does so they're going to be working a property over here and then 
the does are no longer an estrus, then they're gonna come on my property and they'll work my property and I'll see that buck for one to two weeks while he works my does and then he's gone. And then I have another buck come in. And that's why uh, I don't wanna say I'm disciplined, but I don't mind passing up really nice deer. I don't mind having a real nice eight point or a real nice 10 point walk by my stand uh, because I know that's kind of not what I'm, I'm not really meat hunting because my wife doesn't eat venison and I'm the only one that eats venison. So I'm not doing a lot of meat hunting. I'm really just waiting for that one special buck that comes through here. That's kind of what I do. And I just sit, enjoy spending time in the stand. It's peaceful, it's quiet, I shoot video. I just enjoy it. I just love actually taking care of the wildlife, actually doing all, we spend a lot of money on the wildlife between the pond, between all the fields, the feeding, everything. We just take care of all of it. Like I said, last year I saw well over a thousand deer, well over a hundred, 150 bucks. I took one buck last year. This year I might take one or two bucks and that's it off the whole entire property. So anyways, guys, uh, get some moonshine gold, try it. This is a great thing for late season. Anything sweet, rich in carbohydrates, try it again. It's not a food source, it's an attractant source. Talk to you later, duck.